uh, we're getting there. Um, Chris will practice um, most of the week now, so he'll be back. And then Cody, we hope by week's end, is back. Um, what his availability will be for Saturday, I'm not for sure. But uh, if everything goes well, Chris will be available for Saturday. When was the last so, time Chris practiced? Probably 10. It's, it's been 10 to 14 days oh, that wow. he's been out. What's his uh, injury? Just a bruise. Just a bruise of being cautious with. And Cody's the same way. You're talking about Chris Wilkes, right? Yes. Chris. Yes, I'm sorry. Chris Wilkes. What are you hoping to get out of this exhibition game? Uh, just continue the progress and learning because we're two weeks from today. So two weeks from today, we tip it up uh, for the season. So it's about taking that exhibition game and just moving forward of what we've been doing and what we've been seeing in practice um, and the things we've been emphasizing, seeing if we can improve and get better on that. And with having as many guys that have inexperience like we do, um, right now, if you look at you know, the 10 guys, hopefully Cody's back, but if you've got those 10 guys, I, mean, I want to say six or seven of those haven't even played a second. So it's about getting as many people in as here as we can, having some noise, having some distractions, having game day environment, uh, and really trying to get them as much experience as we can from that standpoint. What would you say is uh, Coach Bartow's early impact on these guys? Well, one, he's uh, he's somebody that I appreciate because it helps me a lot. A guy that's had a head coaching experience for 18 years, um, so he understands my seat. He understands. You know, he's called timeouts. He's uh, he's organized a team before, uh, and I think that's where we've seen the benefit. I'll start all the way back till June, and then trying to figure out what we're going to look like from zone to man defensively. Um, I told him I really wanted to, to stay on the offense um, and really wanted to give him the defense. It was kind of the flip of that when I was at New Mexico. Uh, and I, I've enjoyed moving back to the offensive side since being here. So having somebody that I can really trust, give the defense to, um, and let him dive into that, I think he's been very excited about that. So uh, his, his role and what he's trying to do is really create a culture defensively whether we're in zone, man, or press, um, of really doing the things that we want to do. So that's where you know he's you know he's with everything that we do, just like all my staff. But I've really got him zeroed in defensively. With Coach Bartow here, what has changed kind of from a practice standpoint of what he focuses on defensively compared to what before? Well, before uh, just kind of doing a lot of it. Where now it's I can I can watch defense, but my focus can be offense and. I got somebody that I can really just say you got all 100% defense, and that's helped me because it's it's allowed me to be freed up to see all the aspe aspects that I need to see, especially at the offensive end, uh, and trusting him defensively. Uh, hopefully, we'll have more consistency at both ends. Last year, you know, still pretty efficient offensively, but defensively, not a lot the improvement that we had hoped. Now we had obviously. Um, personnel changed uh, before game one, and, and that affects what you're doing. We are long, we are athletic, uh, even with Alex being out for a while, uh, not going to have Sharif or, uh, or Tiger for the season. Alex will be back, you know, hopefully somewhere around the first of the year, we'll, we'll get him back. So we've got some guys that have really good length, and I'm um, hopefully that one of the things we didn't do last year, we didn't create turnovers. Um, and our three-point percentage defense was nowhere where it needs to be. So kind of a combination of what we do with three-point percentage defense, what we do on turning people over, um, and doing a really good job on the backboard. Uh, if we can do those three things better defensively, then I think that's going to help us at both ends of the court. It definitely helps us offensively. Now, the, the other side of that, offense affects defense. We can't be a team that's turning the ball over at a high level, and we've been very good. Uh, here in these the five years of taking care of the ball, and we need to do that because if we're turning the ball over to high level, we're never getting our defense set. So it kind of goes hand in hand. But now it's when I meet with Murray, we're talking about you know his side, my side, and how we make each other better. And so the dialogue since June has been really good with that. When did you first meet him? Uh, when I was a junior in college, he was Coach Knight's grad assistant. Mm. So uh, Coach Knight hired him out. He played at UAB for his father. And when he graduated from UAB, he wanted to get into coaching. And so my junior and senior year in college, uh, he was our grad assistant at Indiana. So I've known him a long, long time. Was he a good grad assistant? 
Oh, yeah, because grad assistant or coach night, you're quiet, you're in the <laughs> background, you don't say anything. And uh, But it's been a lot of fun because as a player, we had these red notebooks, and he came in about a month ago carrying a bag, and he had like eight of those red notebooks that he, he's a – he writes down everything, and so it's been a lot of fun going back and reminiscing, not just so much the two years he was with me when I was playing, but also seeing some of the things Coach Knight was emphasizing and the things that sometimes as a player you forget, it's generated some conversation in our meetings that, hey, yeah, we need to think about this, or this is this is a pretty good way of saying it, and those type of things, because he took notes on everything. Coach, uh, with Aaron and Thomas no longer here, that's a pretty big chunk of your three-point shooting. Have you yeah. seen anyone really step up in terms of that over the summer? Yeah, not just three-point shooting with those two, but leadership and guys that, you know, Tom was a four-year guy and Aaron was a three-year guy. So that's kind of the, the concern is that those two were go-to guys. Um, you knew you could go to Aaron, put the ball in his hands, and more times than not he's going to create something good. And you had Tom that you whatever you ran for him was – pretty efficient so now it's trying to find out who's that going to roll is going to be and so it's not just the three-point shooting it's kind of the experience side but but three-point shooting we got guys that can shoot it uh, we have seen that you know obviously hands and wilkes can shoot the basketball chris smith's shooting has improved um I, I think with what we have with our freshmen uh david singleton can really shoot the basketball jules is coming jules is a big time driver uh, but shooting the ball much better from the from the arc. I think the difference is you don't have that special big like you had in in Tom. Uh, Tom was a unique player that way, where you could put a seven footer at the three point line. Uh, but we're different, you know. With Mo, uh, you got somebody that runs the floor extremely hard, uh, and something that we haven't really had is one a rim protecting guy, and two a guy you could throw lobs to. And I think our bigs now are more in the area of. Instead of picking and popping and shooting three, we're throwing the ball to the rim and letting them go get it. Uh, all those guys do that. Jay Hill does it. Kenny does it. Mo does it. Uh, now, guys that could pick and pop some would be Alex when he comes back, and Cody Riley is an inside-outside guy, uh, maybe our best low post presence. So I think you'll see us more. Our offense will evolve more around high-low post, and then the drive and kick threes come from that than maybe what it's been in years past. Do you foresee this $125,000 G League thing being a threat to college basketball? Well, I don't think it's – threat wouldn't be the word I used. I, I think it's just uh, – it's going to be an option that the elite players have uh, coming out of high school, you know. And now those players have to – there's just more information they got to gather to figure out just the path they want to take. Because ultimately, if I'm a player uh, and I'm an elite player coming out of high school – uh, my whole goal is to make sure if I feel like I'm a one and done guy, it's about the upcoming draft. It's my draft positioning is what's going to be key if I'm a one and done type of player. So with that, yes, you're going to get that money if that's what is going to be interest. Everybody comes from different backgrounds, but you are going to be playing against professionals. You're playing in a league that has 25, 26, 27, even 28 year olds in it. That that's their paycheck. <laughs> They're out of college, and that's that's their business. And so you're playing against grown men that are doing everything they can to get a paycheck. Uh, where in college, you're playing against basically guys your own age. It's it's what you've been used to playing against. So, what's the best avenue of making sure if I'm not going to be somebody in college very long, and I am a one and done or two and done, how am I best best positioning myself for the draft that I'm projecting to be? because that's the bottom line. You, you can go that route if you want to go that route, but if your draft talk, stock dives, to me that's a huge negative because once you have that mindset of the NBA, they don't change very often. It takes a lot to, if they say, oh, no, you're this, it takes a lot for them to say, oh, no, you're this now. Uh, it's going to take years of that development. I think that's the, that's the positive about college is that you're going to do it against your own age, guys you've already played against that you're comfortable with. You're going to be highlighted uh, at that college that you t attend. You're going to be highlighted. G League, you're probably not going to be highlighted because uh, there's other guys that are going to have the ball and have their own mindset about how to do it. And then, you know, obviously the, the educational piece to me still comes into play because I think that's important. Um, you, wouldn't get any, you wouldn't get any kind of start on your college degree that way. If you're one and done, you're at least getting – to, you know, guys get to 25% of a degree 
uh, if you're a one and done. If you don't do it at all, you're obviously going to be at zero at that. And I, I think there's a, a big merit for that educationally too.